Hey guys, welcome back to another Surveying with Robert. Hey, I apologize. It's been November, I guess, since I did the last, maybe October, since I did the last tip. Um, Terminal Dimensions, moved from Arkansas to Mississippi, life's been crazy. Okay, so we're back at it. And today, I've got something exciting for you. I want to show you how to do an offset with your GPS. So I was looking at a Facebook thread the other day and I noticed that not many people really know how to do an offset with their GPS. I saw all kinds of crazy different things. I'm going to show you in Trimble Access how to do an offset with your GPS because um, like I said, I don't think many people really know how to do this. More importantly, I'm going to show you how to keep a vector line with it. Okay. So first of all, you would think you would go in to measure and measure points and that's not where you want to go. Um, what we want to do is we want to go into Kogo, we want to go to Compute Point. So what it's looking for is a point name right now. So the point name is going to be this power pole. So I'm going to give this power pole point name number 10. I'm going to call it PP for power pole. I'm going to do this by burying in distance. My start point is going to be this point. So if you'll notice there's a, uh, an arrow with three little dots on it. If we hit that little arrow, it's going to say measure down there. So we're going to do measure. So let's call this 1000 and we're going to call it our offset. So what this is, this is a point we're going to use to calculate that power pole by bearing a distance. So we're going to do topo point, point name, blah, 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 two meters. We're all good. Enter, measure. So let's measure this point real quick. Store. Okay, so now I've stored this point as point number 1000, and we're going to use this point to calculate from. So we're point names 10, uh, power pole, bearing in distance, start point here, 1000, azimuth origin sun. This is kind of a fun one. I like doing this one when the sun's shining. It makes life so much easier. So what we're going to do, azimuth origin is sun, so we're going to give it an angle from the sun of zero. So what we're saying is, we are, if I'm looking at the sun, I'm in the shadow, looking at the sun, that's zero, okay? Keep that in mind if you need to do 10 degrees, 15 degrees one way or another. Or if I'm on the other side of the pole looking back at the shadow, and I, let's say that I can't shoot this because of a, an obstruction. There's a big tree and I can't get fixed or I'm too close to the pole, whatever the reason is, and I need to go to the other side of the pole. So what I'll do is instead of an angle from sun zero, I'll say 180. So I'll get on the other side of the pole. Now I'm 180 degrees because now I've got the sun to my back instead of to my face. So we're going to keep delta azimuth at zero. We're going to go to horizontal distance. I'm going to say it's about 3.5 feet. I'm not going to change the vertical distance any. And I'm going to say calc. Okay, so now you'll see we've got point number 10, power pole, we've got the northing, the easting, and the elevation, and it says store as. If you hit that arrow, you're going to see there's some options. WGS84, local grid. For some reason, nobody wants to pick azimuth, horizontal distance, and vertical distance, which is insane because that's where the vector line's at. Um, WGS84, local and grid, no vector lines attached to it. It's locking them down as coordinate. If you say an azimuth, a horizontal distance, and a vertical distance, it's going to give us an azimuth between here and here with a horizontal and vertical distance, which is actually what we're storing. Makes sense when you think about it, huh? So we're going to use this, and what that's going to do, it's going to create a vector line. Why do I need a vector line? If you're post-processing an opus position, so let's say in Business Center, I brought in an opus position and I'm going to post-process everything. Well, if I've got offsets in here, when I move my base station, if there's no ver um, vector line attached to that offset, then it's locked down as a corded. It's not going to move. My offset point I shot will move, but this offset point will move. This point won't. This is locked down as a coordinate. It's not locked down. Um, with an azimuth and distance, so it won't move. So if you're doing a network adjustment, you've got some offsets on some power poles, some fence corners, some trees, whatever. If you don't do it this way, no vector line, it's not moving, can wreak havoc on a survey if you don't do this correctly. So, and a lot of us have come up with workarounds 
because we didn't know how to do it this way. And that's what I saw in that Facebook thread. That's what prompted me to do this video. So let's take this back in the office real fast. I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna show you that there's actually a vector line attached, okay? Okay, had to uh, stop and pick a little pick-me-up. Ah, nothing like a little Mountain Dew. Okay, so I've already copied the data over to the computer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drop this job file into Trimble Business Center. So bring it in, convert to imported file definition, okay. Let's look at that vector line. Let's see what it looks like. And there we go. So we've got a vector line going from the um, offset point to the power pole, which is exactly what we want. Uh, if you don't see this line in between these two, then you have a problem. So you can see there's my offset and there's my power pole. So what happens if we decide to bring this in to Google Earth? Bring it in and see what it looks like on Google Earth. And let's zoom down here. That power pole is right there next to my driveway. And that's about the position that I would guesstimate. I was standing over there. There's the pole, there's the camera. Looks like Google Earth may be off a few feet because I was using the GPS network here in Mississippi to shoot that with. So, um, and I was standing in the shadow. So, this just let you know, uh, this is a great way to do this with the vector line attached to the point. Um, hope this helps. I've got some other videos I'm working on. Uh, one of them is gonna be the RTX processing static processing because I know you guys are all having problems with the uh, government shutdown so I'm going to show you how to do that. Hopefully I get that video out before the end of the week as well. So this is Tuesday tip. Um, again I apologize for taking so long to get this uh, to get another video out but uh, man I've been busy. I don't know what to tell you guys. Well, anyways hope you enjoy it and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and as always you guys be safe and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.